Well, let's go ahead and move forward. Um, did anyone have a chance to look over the minutes from January? Yes, I, I did. And um, I, I um, move that we accept the minutes. I'll second. OK. Uh, so all in favor? I, I'll post. OK, so the minutes from January have been accepted. Um, our next regular meeting will be March 30th, I believe. I should double check if I got that right. Here, I can, I can tell you I have an old fashioned uh, system here. <laughs> um, so we moved it. To, to Thursday, March 31st. Oh, is it the 31st? Okay, sorry, I did get that. That's, it, that's what I have. It doesn't mean it's right. I have that too. Okay. Then it must be right. Okay. Um, so the next meeting is March 31st. So the week before that was spring break, um, which is why we moved the meeting. It sounds like Thursday worked out better than Wednesday. So we'll have to get that corrected. Um, does anyone have any announcements? Oh, I, I did want to say that I did talk to, I've forgotten her name now, down at uh, North Mountain Park a while back. Libby? Yeah, Libby. And uh, she got a hold, she tried to get a hold of uh, uh, True North to meet us down there. And True North has not been responding to her. So anyway, I just wanted you guys to know it's still in the mix. We're kind of trying to figure out how to get them down there so we can look at the system, the solar system. Do you mean True South? Did I say true north? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true south. I was told, I was like, wow, <laughs> what could that be? They changed their name. <laughs> um, would anyone, I, Larry is calling me right now, um, but would someone be able to reach out to him and get him what he needs to hop on the meeting? Um, that way I can keep. Okay, I'll do that. Managing the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure why he's calling. Because he can't get on. I assume he's having trouble getting on. Okay. Um, so, okay, was there anything else, James, about? No, that was it. I just want people to know that um, I have been, I didn't just completely forget about it. Okay. Is that because you've been trying to phone True North? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there is one other thing that I wanted to bring up, and that is uh, the whole banner thing with the city. I mean, the whole legal department got involved in everything. And so um, we can't put our, our logo on the banner, but uh, apparently we can't, I, I asked Dana again, if we could at least um, uh, co-sponsor the banner. And so Dana hasn't gotten back to me yet, but that's another piece of this unfolding puzzle. Okay, <laughs> of we, have, we have an agenda item about Earth Day. Oh, okay, all right, I didn't see that. Banner. Right. So we'll get to that. Okay. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, Risa. Yes. A quick announcement, Siskiyou Film Festival starts tomorrow. They're doing online uh, fundraising thing. If you have nothing to do tomorrow, you might consider it's through KS Wild, Siskiyou Film Fest. All right, thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, and then we have reports from other commissions. Is there anyone wanting to do that? No, okay. Um, that is something that hopefully as we go through our goal setting, we can figure out how um, actually to have more of those because I think we need, we need that coordination with the other commissions. Um, were there any public forum uh, applications this time? Nope, okay. So we don't have public forum and then we don't have any reports or presentations planned, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if Tanya wants to give us an update uh, from council. Yes. Um, so I think that the biggest one, the, the council agendas have been pretty light as of uh, recently, as our new uh, city managers come on um, and he's getting uh, things worked out. But we had a big conversation at the last meeting. And, you know, a lot of us who have had issues um, uh, that, uh, you know, that we've kind of put on the back burner waiting for the, the city manager to come on, we brought those forward and he's starting to try to get them into the calendar and the scheduling. Um, so that's that's been um, you know th that's one of the the things that we're now starting to see is I think we'll once our HR issues line out which hopefully um, they will in the near future we, me, we Tanya, may be able I'm sorry to interrupt 
but I have a, a, a text from Larry asking for a good link so that he can join the meeting. I'm wondering, yeah. possibly Mary, if you could please send him a link and he will join us. I just did. He's got okay. it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I just, just trying, he just. Thank you. Can I just double check, Laurie's got it because she's trying to still get in. Mary, would you want me to send it to her? I sent him the message. He should be getting on soon. I mean, Laurie, not Larry. <laughs> yeah, I, she's not trying to get in, so. Okay. Sorry, Tanya. I just. Oh, no, that's fine. It's if we can get every, we don't want anybody waiting in a cyber closet somewhere. Right. When they're exactly. trying to be here. <laughs> All right. Well, we have Kate now, so hopefully Larry will be mm -hmm. on here in just a second. Hi, Kate. Hi. Sorry, it took um, me a while. Uh, so no problem. Uh, so the the other thing that I think impacts uh, the the council's work or the this commission's work is just um, an issue that I think involves most of the commissions. It's on some level or another, and that is that the we're moving forward. The council's moving forward with uh, working with SOU to create a citywide survey on our general fund uh, and how what our priorities are for that general fund. And just as a reminder, that covers fire, police, uh, planning or community development and uh, parks. As really those are the main the main programs there. And and we, as you know, we are ha we have some financial issues that have been brewing for you know several years now and have kind of come to a head. So we are needing to find out what uh, people think about different priorities in the general fund. So that's we're we're just now figuring out the questions are going to be, there's a subcommittee that's been formed for that. And we are, um, and, and the council has has given some direction to go with the proposal as SOU has outlined it for how to structure the questions. It'll be a two page legal size survey sent to all of the utility addresses that we have. Great. Um, does that have, does it have questions around uh, funding for you know, implementing the SEEP? Um, I don't, I, I don't believe so yet. I, I don't know if there are plans to do that. The, the conversation, the way that the SOU folks have identified it is that they'll be creating these bundles and people can say whether they like the bundle and it's got changes to those general fund elements, but we don't really do climate work in the general fund. Um, it's right now the the one position we have is in the electric department. Um, but if we were to do anything additional on climate, it would be a general fund element. There's no other way to fund it with the other enterprise uh, pieces. You know, particularly if if you're looking at the engagement, the larger community, the part of the SEEP that isn't the city's to do. The, it would that would have to get funded through the general fund. Can I ask a question, Tonya? Is it asking like priorities around funding? It's not asking people to prioritize, you know, these these departments up against each other. The, that's why the the SOU uh, department that's helping us has suggested that we do these sort of bundles, and they have some way of taking people's answers from these various bundles and and kind of telling us what that means in terms of their priorities. Um, but I don't, at this point, I, I haven't seen anything that says that they're going to maybe have a, a climate person, you know, new climate investment in this bundle, but not that bundle. I don't think it's a part of the conversation at all at this point. That, that was my follow-up question, because as long as that's not part of the discussion, climate will always be seen as this separate tick box exercise when actually the implementation of SEEP is in a way an economic, you know, integral to an economic plan or any plan for the city of Ashland, because it's actually our transportation infrastructure, our energy infrastructure, our consumption infrastructure, it's absolutely everything. So if it's not even acknowledged that SEEP is an influencing factor in those bundles, we're kind of on the back foot before we even begin of implementing SEEP. Well, you know, the the different departments have taken on the elements of the SEEP that align with what they do. You know, there's 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 activities that are happening in each of the departments 
but there isn't there isn't anything in the general fund right now that is is climate specific money you know to and particularly as it relates to uh engagement with the larger community you know those kinds of struggles that we have had have always been resource limited you know we don't have the staff or we don't have the money um but at, at, at this point i don't think the intention is to include um to include kind of any of those value pieces that aren't already in the general fund so it's the same thing for um you know the 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 social equity folks came in front of us the other night and they are asking for a certain amount of money because they want someone who's a dedicated position on on social equity and environmental justice but they're you know as far as i know this this that conversation's not in there either it's it's the survey from what i can tell isn't asking about sort of aspirational things it's sort of this is what we do in the general fund you know we have to make some changes because of our financial realities. What kind of changes would you be interested in? But I don't, I don't see it yet saying, you know, that other part of the question, which is what isn't here yet that you think so, should be there? Isn't that difficult to have that conversation without the other part? Because that's the future vision, a resilient, thriving, I mean, look at the climate change vision look at where we want to be economically, that's the bigger question, because without that far reaching goal of where we're trying to get to, how do you decide? You just, I don't know how you decide, like in terms of funding. Um, sorry, Mani, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh no, Reese has just had her hand up for a long time. So I'm gonna let Risa go ahead. No, I, Bex, Bex spoke my, okay. um, my concern and interest. And, and the only thing I would add is that I just wonder whether or not this to see this as an opportunity to to get climate uh, on the way Beck says it the front foot not the back foot. Mm -hmm. So what would well, we need to do at this point in time to affect that survey if we wanted to make sure that climate is reflected in there and especially I mean we've had such a lack of um staff time besides Stu uh, and just you know not even having anyone to do a lot of the outreach or even some of the web stuff that needs to be done and um, so how what would be the best way for us to express where we think more resources need to be in the survey at least reflected in the survey so people can give us input on that um well the where they're at in the process is that we have a subcommittee of a couple of counselors and I think the city manager is on that and they, they're interacting with this um, with the university team but we're in we we have right now they're working on developing the questions and what, what are going to be in those bundles and uh, I don't know if there'll be I know there'll be some additional demographic questions you know but they're they're moving forward with figuring out what the questions are and I think that that's if you're going to in if you're looking to influence it in some space i think it's it's in the question formation piece which they're in right now um and they've i think they've started to put the bundles draft bundles together and that sort of thing so um you know this if if there if there is going to be any sort of an of an effort to ask any questions around those elements that are not already in the general fund i think you know they're right in the process right now of where that would be, where, where it could be added potentially, but that window will close pretty soon. Who's the main contact for that? Um, I, I think probably, I think Paula Hyatt is leading that subcommittee. Okay, uh, Risa, did you have your hand up? It, it's just, I people keep texting me, Lori Kaplan and Linda Peterson Adams are trying to get on. Uh, I sent Lori a link. I've sent Laurie a link. <laughs> okay, well, Linda, Linda needs a link too. Okay, I can send Linda a link. Uh, Sorry. No, that's okay. There's, we'll, we'll work this out before next time. Maybe, um, Mary, we can do a little uh, prior testing next time, you and I, and we can work out some of the kinks because I, I don't understand it any better, so I'm not sure, but um, we can at least figure out what's going on. Here, I'll take a picture of it. Okay, I am forwarding a link to Linda. 
Okay. Um, so as a commission, if we're interested in making sure that there are questions around climate and that they get at kind of what Bex was saying of, you know, it actually is part of all of the different bundles of the general fund. Um, can we draft a, a letter then to that committee and express that and hope that that at least they take that into consideration? And is anyone willing to work on that? Uh, Larry? Yeah. Um, let me see if I, yeah, I, I unmuted. Well, I'm confused. Is this a committee of the city? I mean, does it include people outside, you know, citizens outside the city or is it strictly staff and council coming up with this? It is, to figure out how to... no, it's the, the Southern Oregon University's survey program are the ones that are identifying the kind of the boundaries of how the survey will work. And they're, they are working with a subcommittee of the council and the city manager to start to kind of assemble those bundles. My understanding is, is that the bundles will go from, you know, sort of fully funding our general fund as it stands now to, you know, severe cuts across the board and reduction of services, some combination of those elements in several bundles. So are any of the people from Southern Oregon University kind of involved with city government or, or super knowledgeable? I'm just not quite seeing how all the pieces would fall into place to really get an effective survey if there isn't some element of people like budget committee members or you know people in the community who are who have been politically active around budget issues and so the, the, council, the environmental community. Too. Yeah, there, there's no there's no time for that kind of a process. There just simply isn't. Um, if we if something doesn't, we need to get guidance from this community about how we deal with our budget next year. Because if we come around the horn and we're in the same place we are, we need to know what to cut. Period. Sure. Like that's so where we're at. So the aim is to have a tool to help prioritize based on how much cutting has to happen. I'm, I'm just trying no, to get it. No, it's, it's, it's to get a better sense of what do people in this community want us to do? We have reached a point where we cannot kick the can down the road any longer. We don't have the resources to maintain the services we have. So we need to do, we, we have a couple of options. We can, we can cut significantly our budgets, which means we're accepting lower service levels in those four departments. We can look at new ways of new ways of resourcing those those programs, or we can look at some combination. And the purpose of the survey, because that's going to fall to the council, mm -hmm. really, it's the council it, and the council needs to give direction to staff about what to bring back to us for a budget. But the council needs to know what is the what is the kind of the will of the people in terms of these services. But there is no, but the things that don't already exist in the general plan or in the uh, general fund at this point, I don't think there's a plan to include them in any of those bundle options that they're giving people. So. Well, okay. What what strikes me on the on the conservation and climate side of it is that perhaps we should be um, we meaning the city should be relying on outside organizations or institutions for doing that the the climate piece. If I'm there not sure is, I understand. Well, I I guess I mean is the, it's so confusing. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with the budget and how all these things work. And so for instance, like Stu's job, mm -hmm. is that going to appear in the budget as it was before or will it just be a vacant position that's subject to the vicissitudes of how the budgeting happens? I don't think we have time to go this deep into this conversation. Um, 
And so what I'd like to recommend is because I really want to do our goal setting today um, and we have to get it done before we get back to our regular business. What I would like to recommend is that we submit at least a letter to, to Paula Hyatt and the committee and say that we would like to see in the survey, uh, the SEEP and climate um, outreach specifically included. Um, I don't know what that looks like, like what the best wording would be around that, but um, it does sound like other groups were asking for similar things as far as actually asking to have uh, feedback on whether people would pay more to include those services. Um, and I think if we point out that the city is not meeting its emissions targets, its SEEP targets, um, and we want to see um, a question around how much the public is willing to actually invest in that, I, you know, we know our public is very willing to invest in, in climate action. So I want to see that specifically called out. Uh, James. I'll be quick. I, it just has to do with what you're talking about, Marnie, <laughs> in terms of a letter. Uh -huh. It seems like it would be more powerful or even dually powerful if we could get the uh, the policy commission to also put yeah. their two cents in into that survey wording so that okay. it doesn't just include outreach. Okay. And because it is an important factor in all this. And, you know, this just reminds me, I in reading your, your awesome thing to sneak preview, Anya, um, it just reminds me of how poignant this is, how really important it is because of the very thing that Anya is pointing out again and again, that youth are pointing out in general, this is their future and how important it is to include something about that in the survey about what it means to Ashland's future. That's all. Great, thank you. So if we work with the CPC to draft a letter, get it to uh, Paul Hyatt, would that cover us? Can I make a motion to do just that? Um, can you do it? Can you hold off one second? We'll just get Bex and then Tanya and then you make the motion. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree, James. And, but my issue now we're like chasing, chasing our tail a little bit at the end, trying to get something in when I just feel with a document that's been published like SEEP, with the impact that climate change is having on this valley that we're feeling firsthand, with the fact that we've got absolute priorities in terms of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions that's been introduced. I don't know why we're writing a letter at the tail right. end of a process. I totally yeah. support writing the letter, but I feel that in any future issue that is being discussed at this level, I think the gravity of climate change and building it in to the vision and the infrastructure of the city needs to start happening because we are in trouble. We are in trouble and we will continue to be economically, socially and environmentally in trouble unless we start bringing in climate change to how we function as a city, to every decision and also to our future vision in terms of considering it. Otherwise, we're gonna fight the budget forever. We need to get some resilience going on. Yeah, and maybe that's yeah. in the letter because I mean, the whole reason we passed SEEP and an ordinance to go with it is to make it a mandate so that it's, it's so it does exactly what you're saying. And yet here we are, you know, coming in and trying to find a very small part of the budget where we can fit in climate change. So that's not the way it's intended to go. Um, Tanya, did you have something to add? Uh, yeah, just that the CPC has already had their uh, February meeting okay. and the timing, um, the, the, questions will be finalized before there's time for them to meet again and, and approve okay. anything. Okay. So just so that you so, know. Okay. I think what we could do though, is we could draft our letter and, um, you know, just see if Rick has any feedback on it. If, if there's yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if, if you need the, if you that. need approval by the CPC though, that, that right. will not work with the timing. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Risa, did you have something that you wanted to add? No, I just yeah. was trying to, Yes, you I did. I think we're all in agreement. Okay, okay. But, but you were going to make the motion. Well, wait, wait, I have one more thing related specifically to the letter. Could this letter be delivered not just to Paula Hyatt, but also to the city manager? Since the city manager must play a huge role in this, I'm thinking. And he's not been around for 
our whole history of climate activity. Um, Tanya, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you if you all send it to council at ashland.or.us, the city manager will get it, all the counselors will get it, and then I think the department heads get it as well. So, um, okay. you know, you can title it to Councillor Hyatt, because I think she's leading that subcommittee, but if you send it to the council address, it'll go to all of us. Okay, and then if I draft something up, Bex, would you mind looking over it just to get at that deeper issue that you've been bringing up, which I think is yes. really important. Okay. I would be happy to. And does anyone else want to be involved in that? Larry? Yeah. Great, okay. Okay, uh, Risa. <laughs> I, I move that we empower our chair, Marnie Koopman, to write a letter on behalf of the CCOC in support of inclusion in the bundled questionnaire that SOU is helping create to get a sense of how the community wants to spend its money that the Climate Energy Action Plan passed by former city councilors has a front seat on the bus. Sounds good. I second that motion. Okay. Uh, Sorry, that is there any more discussion or did we, we covered all that? Okay, all in favor? I'm all opposed. Okay. Okay, we are past. Thank you so much for getting through that quickly. Um, all right. We are not doing any other reports this time unless there's something urgent. So we're going to move past all of that. Uh, yeah, Jamie. Did Tanya get all of her? I mean, that was one. Was that the only thing Tanya wanted to talk about or? I just wanted to make sure she got. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's um, that's it. Like I say, it's been pretty light agendas these last couple of meetings, uh, so I don't have anything else to report. But thanks, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we just want to do really quickly. Um, this issue came up around the co-op wanting to do a banner for Earth Day and for another event. Um, and some discussion about whether we can co-sponsor that banner, which we can't because they're serving alcohol. Um, but then there's also a discussion around whether we wanna do any sort of tabling for Earth Day at, and I believe there's a couple different events happening. So maybe someone can give us a very, very quick overview of where we are with all of that. Um, and I'm not sure, Larry, if you have the best overall well, understanding of who's doing what. I have a fair amount of it. Uh, first of all, I'll disclose I'm on the board of the co-op. So I have an, an interest in this, but I'm also a communicator for the board <laughs> with, with the city. So um, I think what, what the co-op is asking right now, they, it's totally been communicated that sponsorship is not happening because of the alcohol tie-in. So we don't need to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Do they still get a banner though? Or does yeah, no, no, they're still doing a banner because what's happening is this is the 50, well, the 50th anniversary of the co-op is this year. So okay. it's a really big deal for the community in terms of sustainability and uh, you know, local agriculture and all these issues that the co-op has been involved with and supported. And so the co-op really, all they really want out of this meeting today is actually a letter endorsing putting up a banner, no sponsorship. And the reason is it's a technicality with the city. In order for a non, non it, it, it's, it's very complicated. There have been so many emails going back and forth between city staff and the co-op general manager. And what I can say is all we simply need to do if we're willing is to say, the, the CCOC uh, supports or endorses the co-op being able to put up a banner uh, to do with the 50th anniversary of the co-op. And that's no and tabling, that's just, no okay. anything 
else at this that's point. That's different from Earth Day, right? That's those are separate. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. well, the Earth, there was an Earth Day request that you might you got from Temple on Shalom. It's a separate thing, and any and the co-op is doing two different events. Okay. And wanting to do two different banners, but at this point, the co-op is not able to submit. They they filled out an application to the city to request the banner, and in order to deliver the application, they need a city commission to okay. endorse it, and that's it. That's all okay. we're looking. Would someone I, like to make a motion that we endorse well, the co-op? I just want to bring that question up, can we endorse it? And I just asked Dana that question, but I haven't heard back from her. So we could still have a motion to do that, yeah. but she might get back and say, no, I don't know, so. Okay. Jamie. We're, are we talking the banner that goes over the downtown? Yeah. Okay, just wanna make sure we're. Yeah, I, I think part one of the things in the email exchanges I saw is that the city has kind of lost track of how this process works. And there are different categories of organizations and somehow the co-op, because the co-op is a business uh, rather than a nonprofit, there's, it has to follow this different path. And in order to follow this path, they, it requires an endorsement from a commission or some city body. Um, and that's all, at this point, that's all that's being looked for. The alcohol issue has been fully aired with the people at the co-op and they said, we'll just eliminate that. There'll be no mention of it on the banner. They have submitted a banner to the city, to okay. city staff, which city staff thought looked okay, but they didn't, they said that the process for getting it approved to be hung is complicated and they're still not sure. So even with this endorsement, it may not happen but it can't even be applied for without the endorsement. Um, Risa. I move that the CCOC endorse the ability for the Ashland Food Co-op to celebrate 50 years. And, and hang downtown, a banner. Downtown, on in a banner. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, and... Is there any more discussion that anyone wants to have around that? Okay, all in favor, all opposed. And, and, and I did my in favor having disclosed that I'm on the board. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, motion passes to approve to um, approve their submission. For <laughs> all this requires is some communication from CCOC saying we endorse the, okay. hanging, the co op hanging a banner, and there will be a forthcoming application from the co op. Okay. So the CCOC actually doesn't have to do anything except that. Okay, great. So I, I, I just want to reiterate one more time that um, I did send a message to Dana, and I think it's prudent on our part to make sure we get a, at least that cursory reply from her before we actually send that out because I don't want to get myself in hot water for. Okay. You're telling me one thing and then us doing another. So. Okay. Okay. So just yeah, just keep me in the loop on that, and then we'll move forward if if that comes out okay. Yeah. Thank Great. you, James. Thank you, James. Did a lot of communicating, in you know these emails. It's it's like really almost like a Kafka novel. <laughs> survived. Thank you so both far. for doing that, and thank you for leaving me off those emails. <laughs> it sounds like there was a lot there. Okay, well, great. Um, the other issue was the Rogue Valley Water Summit. And I think James, you brought that up. Did you wanna? Well, oh, there, there or was it Larry? Did, 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 you should have gotten a communication from Temple Emic Shalom asking about about whether CCOC wanted to do any tabling at, a, at an Earth Day event that they're yeah. putting on. Yeah, sorry, I lumped that together with the other Earth Day and with the co-op banner yeah. issue, but they don't necessarily go together. No, they don't go together. Okay, okay, so there is- I'm just Day. aware of it. I'm not connected with that plan, but you, you should have gotten some detail. Yeah, request. yeah, I did. It was didn't seem like an official email, so I didn't include it in the packet. Um, but basically they're having an Earth Day event and wanna know if we wanna do any tabling at the event. Um, 
you know, we could just form a subcommittee that uh, comes out of our outreach group and decide, and within that committee decide if we want to do tabling um, rather than have to decide it right now. How does that sound? That seems like a great idea. Okay. I mean, I think this is an opportunity for CCOC yeah. to do an outreach that will be really easy. Yeah. Uh, don't have to make any commitment. We just have to indicate interest and we could drop out before it happens. There's a date, I think it's on the 24th of April. Okay. okay. Is there anyone especially interested in doing that type of work? I, I would certainly be involved. Okay. And if there were at least one other person, this would be out, we could do whatever kind of outreach we thought was appropriate. Okay. Uh, so I see Larry, know. Kate, and Jamie. Did you well, guys? I have a, a comment. Um, yeah. So um, the co-op reached out to Recology too to see if we wanted to do like some um, like waste prevention, recycling education. So I was wondering if maybe Bex, did you get like there might, I guess what I'm saying is there might be some of us that are also doing art, well, committed somewhat to doing another table as well. Maybe, I don't know, we could consider all sorts of options and we have time, so. Yeah, yeah. we're doing quite a lot of SOU and students are leading this in student life, so I'm not as close to it, but yeah, I'm really happy to hear you've been reached out to, Jamie. Mm -hmm. And there's another event in town as well, so the SOU has been asked to be part of. Um, so I think, yeah, it's great having that kind of vibrancy all over town, but then not detract from each other's events as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm wondering if uh, Larry and Kate and Jamie, I wasn't sure if you were volunteering or if you were just wanting to speak. <laughs> well, Sorry. I'm, I guess what I was um, saying is like, there's a little bit of a challenge for me in that I, I could join a table and yeah. pop up forth or, you know, so. Okay. I wonder I though if, if, if you guys could coordinate and figure out kind of which events, cause there's the Earth Day event and then there's the Rogue Valley Water Summit. Um, and then there's the co-op birthday event. So there's kind of three different events going on. They're um, not all on the same day, are they? No, no. Okay. The, the two Earth Day ones might be, I'm not sure. What's the other Earth Day one? There's the okay. co-op Earth Day event and then there's the Temple MX Shalom Earth Day. Oh. Event. Um, so it would be good to coordinate on those and decide you know, which ones, if any, we're going to do some tabling and then what kinds of uh, outreach we want to do. And then there's also SOU. And then there's also SOU. Yeah. When's SOU, Bex? The 22nd. Thank you. Kate, are you, you're on mute, so, but it looks like you're saying something. Yeah, it sounds like they're all the same day. So we have three events on the same day. Oh, okay. Because Earth Day is the 22nd, Friday. Yeah. Um, so we have the, and that's the co op's 50th anniversary, I'm understanding. I, that's a different event. But I, is that the same day, the 22nd? The co-op is on the 24th, the Sunday. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and then the Temple MX Shalom is maybe the 22nd? Mm -hmm. And then the SOU is the 22nd. But Earth, the co-op is on the 24th, I'm hearing. And then all the days, the 29th. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, is there a group that can gather and figure all of that out and coordinate and let any of the rest of us know if you need us to do something um, and just take the lead on that? I do believe Larry already volunteered, but he'll need some help. Yeah, I would, I, yeah, I would say let's just plan, we'll organize a, a subgroup meeting okay. and, and make it happen. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to do some communicating around that. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, and then we have our subgroup progress reports, which uh, if we want to do them really, really fast, that'd be great. Uh, I know subgroup two doesn't have a whole lot to- Barney, we, yeah. we, we skipped over the water summit thing. Oh, sorry. I was kind of lumping it in with the other one. Is there, did you want to provide some more information about that? Well, I, first of all, I wanted to know I mean, it's, it's up to us whether we want to uh, endorse or uh, uh, co-sponsor co 
that event. It's a Rogue Valley wide event. And I think that it's within our, within our role, you know, what our role is in terms of water as part of climate change and the, and the use of water and in Ashland in particular. And it's consistent with uh, how we've, you know, the roles that we play in terms of um, outreach. And this water summit, if we were part of it, could really add to the flavor of what is going to happen in that summit, if we're, especially for a co-sponsor. Yeah. And I don't think they're asking for money now, but they're asking for money from a lot of people, I would assume, but not that we'd have to contribute money, but we would contribute our resources in order to be part of that. I don't know if it requires for us to, uh, to approve that or not to become a, a co-sponsor. I think it but, does, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it would be. If we became okay. a co-sponsor, it would be for our participation in it, not necessarily uh, in terms of, we don't have a budget, so we can't provide that kind of thing, but we, we do have service or our service to provide in support of that. And it, I would be happy to uh, work with who, uh, whoever I need to as part of the commission to uh, see what, what was required or asked of us and then uh, coordinate that as maybe a subcommittee to do that. That's if you great. decide to do that. Okay. Um, what do you know when it is? Yeah, it's on, uh, it's in the fall. They don't have, I don't think there's a date yet. Oh, okay. So we have a while. Uh, wait, we'll host in the summer or oh, fall, summer. it says. So, okay. Not sure yet. Okay. And is it something that we should um, hold off until next meeting of voting on, or should we I, go ahead and vote to endorse it? I don't know what the closing time is for. Um, for applying to be co-sponsor, I can find out, I guess. Uh, I don't have it in front of me right now. Okay. Um, I don't know if Lori is able to talk or can knows anything about that, but it might be something that if we can hold off, that's fine for another month if that, if that works, yeah. Um, I'm fine either way, but it feels like maybe we need a little more information in the packet. Yeah, I'll follow. I, it was more of an inquiry for this meeting rather than a decision. So I think okay. let's just wait till next month. I'll do more inquiry and uh, give more thorough detail on what's happening. Okay, it sounds okay. great. So I hopefully it's something that we'll we'll want okay. to do. Thank you. Um, progress reports subgroup two one. Sorry, did you want to just give any sort of update? or there's no requirement to, but if there's something you want to let us know. Subgroup one, uh, Larry and James. None, uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern okay. waiting for this meeting and the goal okay. setting. Sounds and good. because Stu is gone, more, mostly yeah. now, can't focus his attention on that. I did meet with Stu uh, just on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, okay. We talked a little bit about it. And uh, I, th I think from just the whole picture, we need to step back and look at what our goals are and figure out how we're gonna proceed. Okay, sounds good. Um, subgroup two, so we are moving ahead with the story project. We um, refined the questions a little bit from the ones that we did with the commission, but otherwise they're still similar. And we're kind of doing our first round of story collection. So that's the only update from subgroup two. Um, Risa, or Anya, or Jamie, did you want to add anything? We had a great meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Lori and Lori Kaplan joined us. Yep, that was really helpful. Okay, uh, sneak preview. So we have the wonderful article that Anya put together. So hopefully everyone had a chance to look at that. Um, so we're going to vote on that article and then see if we can line something up for June. Does anyone have any feedback for Anya? James? Yeah, Anya, I, I moved to tears reading this. And um, <clears throat> I, I so appreciate that you're stepping forward to speak the truth to power, you know? And uh, <clears throat> this is exactly what, this, this tenor is exactly what got us the seep in the first place in, in so many ways in front of city council without youth speaking up and out on this issue it um it, it kind of 
tended to fall upon some deaf ears, but when youth are involved, it's a super powerful place. So uh, my, my kudos to you for that. Thank you, James. Yeah, I, yeah, emotional reading this and reminded, yeah, thank you for reminding me why I do what I do, um, which sometimes I need to be reminded about on a bad day. <laughs> but no, I am, um, I really appreciate reading this and yeah, I just want to approve it. Let's get it published. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> I just want to say that, you know, what you wrote, Anya, is exactly what our leaders need to hear. And I think that you are one of our leaders, uh, even though you're not allowed to vote. <laughs> but yeah. uh, truly, you know, everything you said was so right on target. And this is what people need to hear and think about. And, you know, when you talked about older people, you know, saying, dumping it in your lap. I feel bad about that. I'm one of those people. Uh, I feel like, you know, my generation has, you know, we've belched out more greenhouse gases than anybody in the history of the world. And um, you're, you're on the right track. And I hope we can do a lot to support your message. And I just want to go back to the conversation earlier in the meeting, because Larry, that's such a good point. Like, my generation too, it's all been greenhouse gas emissions, but those that are still making decisions and leading stuff are still the ones that don't seem to be able to compute how these issues link. If we're talking about budget, we need to talk about climate change. We can't just, you know, amazing article, but it needs to turn into action at the decision makers. Otherwise, stop making decisions. It's yeah. not gonna help the future of our species yeah no, um, i think thanks you were earlier, earlier when yeah. we were talking about doing that survey i think like exactly what you said was exactly what i was trying to say with the article your article is brilliant on your spot i on. said jamie's hand and then recess well i just wanted to acknowledge anya that there were so many well there are so many reasons to not write an article like this. Um, I'm, I'm too young, no one's gonna listen to me, um, you know, th things of that nature. And I just, I really wanna acknowledge the, the courage and the bravery. I mean, the article alone stands, no matter how old you are, but I mean, here you are, I just, I just think that's really remarkable. And I think you're really brave to write what you did. And it, it was, um, I came because in part because of this article, I came to this meeting with more urgency than I've, I've felt in a long time. Um, so it was very effective in um, getting me emotional about it because we should be emotional about this. This is a big deal. So um, I just thought it was fantastic. And I'm really proud that you're on our commission and representing the youth too, like my son who goes to your high school, you know, and like, wow. So thank you for what you wrote. Risa. Yeah, I just really quick, just say it was such a great way to start the day to, to hear your voice um, in words. But I wonder, Tanya, whether it would be appropriate for Anya to read her article after we approve it at uh, an upcoming uh, council meeting, like in the beginning to, to I don't know. Can't okay. hear you, you're muted. It always sends me that little flashing message that says you're muted. So I catch it right about the time mm -hmm. um, others do, but um, yeah, that we have, we have public testimony and public testimony can be on anything that doesn't have a particular agenda item. So, so, you know, I think people should come and talk to us about the things that matter to them and they should do it consistently and, and, uh, and just keeps it top of mind. And I think, I think we all recognize, um, and, and I've, I've seen it as a counselor that, that the, the demeanor shifts when a young person steps up in front of us, it doesn't matter what, 
commission or council members disagree on outside of that, we absolutely 201 want young people to feel welcome and to what and to hear them and for them to feel heard. So I, um, I, I think, you know, it's a it's a fantastic letter. It does remind us of the urgency of the moment and you know and to cut the need to cut through the clutter and the noise um, so i think i think anytime you want to send somebody to council to read a statement or to you know remind us of the need to keep climate in mind you know you're never going to hear me say that's a bad idea I, and, and i apologize i don't mean to put you on the spot on you <laughs> Um, so, so please feel free to ignore me, but it just I've, occurred to me while I was sitting here. Lisa, I've never heard you apologize for putting someone on the spot before. <laughs> well, it's, a good idea. Would, it's, it's completely up to Anya, obviously, if she wants to do that. Um, and Anya, if you do decide to do that, um, just let us know and we will be there to support you. So Thank I will you. be there to support you. Yeah. And Anya, if um, if the if the article because it's like seven hundred words is more than three minutes, <clears throat> you can split it into two people too, so it doesn't have oh. to be just by one person. Oh, that's smart. That is. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thought of that. Okay. Well, just thank you all for that. I really appreciate all the support from you guys, and it definitely took a little while to get it out. So I'm glad that it's actually here now. Um, and I'm glad it had some of that emotional response that I was trying to get out of it. Um, yes, and thank you for the idea, Reese. I actually think I would be really interested in reading that in front of city council. So I'll think about that. I move that we approve on this article. I second that. Okay, all in favor. Uh, is there gonna be, well, I had oh, a couple just, just minor suggestions, just like tiny suggestions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I would love um, to. They're tiny. Um, one you wrote um it's in the second paragraph um uh what does a a grade on a math exam do uh when i no longer feel like i can have children i was just wondering if maybe that should be changed to should um like uh i no longer feel like i should have children rather than can um, it's just, so minor, minor thing there, not a big deal. Um, and then in the second to last paragraph, um, you said, if you're going to tell us teenagers that it is our responsibility to turn things around, then please join us, or at the very least, get out of our way. I was wondering if um, instead of saying, get out of our way, it might be more effective to say, or at the very least, stop hurting us um that was just a small no i like get out our way mm -hmm. yeah i like get out our way i'm just wondering if that's more passive like okay i'll get out of your way and i'll just keep doing what i'm doing R rather oh, than right. okay no i read that's it that's how it's i took it <laughs> but it, again i mean these are such tiny things so it doesn't the article as itself is great so Thank you for those tiny things, though. That <laughs> kind of what I was looking for. Um, so I kind of like to get out of our way too. I need to think. I think I want to think about that one and how I feel like that would like change up the tone and whatnot. But I do understand what you're saying about the can to should, and I'll think about that second one too. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave those up to Anya if she wants to how she wants to make those small changes, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, and all in favor for passing Anya's article? All opposed. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Anya. I know that was a lot of work and I know how much, uh, you know, how many other things you have on your plate. So thank you. Uh, you really guys write them every month though. So <laughs> somebody does, but we try, we try and spread the, the work around. So I really appreciate that. And yours is going to be just way more powerful, I think, than, than anything most of us can write. Um, we do have the next one, which is CPC. CCOC, which is coming up, and then it'd be nice to have another one ready to go. Uh, does anyone have any specific recommendations for moving something forward? Okay. And which, which month would that be for? 
It would come out in June. Um, I'm wondering oh. if the survey results would be good for that time, Bex. The, oh, yeah. I mean, they'll be, they're out. They're ready. Yeah. We're about to present. So an, ar an article, it would be due for the April packet and then come out in June? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Let me add it to my to do list. Um, and then the next one would come out in July. Do we want something on water at that point? Is that a good moment? Um, that's a good time. Okay. Uh, water actually, yeah, I think. Uh oh. Are you still seeing me? Sorry, <laughs> uh, go ahead. I'm having trouble with my phone here. Um, yeah, that would be a really good time because by what would be the deadline for it? Uh, March, May. That'd be okay. I think by May we'll know where we stand in terms of watershed precipitation and snowpack and everything. So okay. it would be yeah, that would be great. I'd be happy to do it or do it together with somebody. Would okay. be even better. Well, why don't we and, put and it would include, you know, uh, city incentives. I'd work with Julie okay. Smitherman on that and get her. Uh, she, she's going to have more initiatives, I think, uh, before then for the city of Ashland. She's really trying to to get more going for Ashland, and because I think she's going to be getting some additional assistance at the Water Commission. Okay, okay. James. Yeah, uh, Larry, you know, I'm sure you want to be involved in the conversation about the, the water summit, but in that article too, if you could, if we do become involved or even if we aren't, there oh, uh, be something. Uh, yeah, of course. In there of course. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've got two articles lined up. So we'll have three in the queue, which um, seems good enough for now. So what, what is the specific day of the month that that's that would be due? May what? Uh, or I mean to get no, it on our agenda. Generally, uh, two weeks before that meeting. So that's the eleventh, um, May eleventh. Is that May eleventh? Okay. And we'll have um, we'll have something into you uh, in the next couple of weeks for the um, joint. Uh, commission sneak preview thing. We've okay. been we've met a couple of times now, or more. We met once, and we have talked over online a couple of times. So we're we're working on okay. finalizing that. Okay, we'll look for that with the next meeting. Um, okay, so let's move on. We have climate survey results. So Bex and Lori, welcome, Lori. Yay. Thank you. Here I am. <laughs> Great. Bex, do you want to start? Yeah. Oh, wait, and we have like, uh, can you tell us how much time we have so we're appropriate? You have 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yep. Okay. okay. So we do have quite expense, extensive documents summarizing the survey, but with our, so we can share these afterwards, basically. Like okay. This is to give a synopsis of where we were, where we are, where we're going. Um, so, I'll just set the scene and then hand back to Laurie, who's done great work looking at all the results and pulling them together. Did you want to share a screen at all, or are you just going to? Um, it's quite a lot of slides, and we'll probably get both. Like what we've created is for a package of information, and I'm I'm aware it's short of time, so we just want to okay. present it and then ask any questions. So we'll I'll probably just talk, and then if Laurie wants to share anything, I'll leave her um, to share. But I just wanted to kind of just talk through. Um, this was a partnership between SUCAN and then sustainability at Southern Oregon University and had a student working on this project with us. And it was very much looking at um, parts of SEEP and seeing where the community was, but at the same time, knowing it was a follow up survey to the one before that the Ashland Climate Project did. We also wanted to reach a wider demographic um, across Ashland and elsewhere. So we went through different ways of putting the survey out. So we did a lot of um, promotion in terms of the SOU community, staff, faculty and students, a lot of who live in Ashland or um, of course work in Ashland. And then we also went through 
various social media and other ways of promoting it. We wanted a mix. We did get um, 299 responses from a wide um, demographic. So we feel where the, it's not as representative in terms of, um, I guess, what we hope for. It is representative of where we are. It's a good range of views. Um, we ask questions um, around home energy, around solar, around knowledge of incentives, around what people were doing, around appetite um, to make changes, to just get a real feel of where we are in relation to climate um, action in, in Ashland. Um, and it was really important for us to do it as a, you know, this isn't just like we need to stop thinking of like climate change as this um, environmental kind of grassroots thing. It's actually everything. It is literally everything. So that partnership was really important for us to come together in terms of SOU and um, SOCAN Ashland Climate Project. And we're really keen to share the results. So we're going to the Climate Policy Commission and we're coming here keen to share the results with those that can influence um, look at it in terms of the implementation of SEEK, look at it in terms of outreach as well. I think the results are really useful for that. Um, and so we've put the information together in a package um, and there it is for us to use. It can help influence our goal setting and we can work with CPC as well in terms of policy implementation and then where we can support them on outreach. I think in terms of context, that's everything. And then I hand over to Laurie um to talk about the actual results and she's got the package and the document survey results all on SOCAN and she's just put that link in the chat yes. so it's all on the SOCAN website um yes. but I'll hand over to Laurie to talk about the actual results and just highlights from the results because there's an awful lot in there <laughs> yeah and we realized we didn't have time to go through them in detail right yes thank you Bex and this was a really fun project um so we're very proud of it. And it really is a sprawling uh, mass of data that we have here. And so um, as Beck said, the, the intent here really is to help you, uh, help the commissions and help the city council uh, kind of see where uh, folks' heads are at. Um, and I think of it as kind of market research in a way that um, there was, you know, the, uh, you know, we had 300 people take the survey and these are people that are highly motivated, you know, to take a survey. Um, and their attitudes are really interesting. I think these are the people, these are people, this is reflective of people who are, I think, willing and willing to take action. So um, I'll just highlight a few of the results, uh, but there's, my intent here would be just to tease you a little bit with some of it. And then I hope that each of you will take some time to look at what we've put together, we'll, we'll be packaging it even in smaller, uh, you know, tighter highlights uh, so we can do a press strategy, and uh, which we'll probably be doing in the next week or so. Um, but we'd love to come back and have more conversation with you or encourage you to have conversations among yourselves about what you see here, because as I said, it's very rich. Um, so I'll just highlight some of the things that we thought uh, were really interesting. Um, that 90% of the people uh, who took the survey are either um, alarmed or very concerned about climate change. Um, and in their free text comments, they expressed a high degree of support for moving forward with energy initiatives. This was all about building and energy, uh, but they also expressed deep concerns about affordability um, of implementing energy efficiency measures, solar or um, switching from gas to electric. Um, while that isn't really necessarily surprising, I um, spending time with the qualitative comments, I was it kind of came over me as a wave of how um, this feeds into this feeling that uh, climate solutions are only available to some people and not to others. So I think this is a really strong message for the city council, and I want to make sure we use this opportunity to bring forth this message really powerfully, that we have a community that really wants to move forward with these solutions, but there's a lot of people who either can't afford it or think that if even if they can't afford it, that this is going to just deepen the, the cultural divide in this community. Um, so to proceed really cautiously with that. Um, some of the other things, a uh, lot of problems with smoke, 
we asked a question about smoke and heat. Smoke came out as I think a bigger problem than heat. Most people said they're able to keep cool, but 64% of people who took this survey said that they have smoke coming into their houses, um, that they're, you know, maybe they're able to filter it to some extent, but that still means um, there's 11% of the people who took it who said they don't have any way to control the smoke that's coming into their house. So this is a serious um, health impact. This is another thing I think a really big highlight for the Conservation Commission is that 68% of respondents want more information about the city incentive programs. This was when you ask people about the programs that already exist, this kind of goes back to the equity question. Uh, people want home energy audits. They want um, you know, financial support for these programs. They expressed very little knowledge of the programs that the city has already done. They don't know you can get a free home assessment. They don't know about the rebates available. They don't know what virtual net metering is. They're interested, they're, everybody was like, we want solar. I mean, it was like 76% of the people in the survey said, yeah, I, I want solar, whether I'm a renter or a homeowner, they're worried how much is that gonna cost? Um, and when we use the words community solar, they're like, ah, how could I get in on that? I really want to do that. So there's this pent up um, demand for this community solar to get going. And we all know that, you know, it's not to the finish line yet where it can start taking subscribers. Um, we asked people what kind of measures would they most uh, be uh, interested in implementing themselves. And the top was um, increasing their use of reusable products. Um, so that was really cool. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, interest there. Um, so you'll see all of these different conservation measures that you guys are focused on and what are people most interested in doing. Uh, so I think that'll be really rich uh, for you. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, the other thing that was super interesting uh, was we asked people's views about electric appliances versus gas. Uh, because as we talk more about getting rid of methane, reducing natural gas usage in this community, we really want to know what do people think about these options. And people were very, very favorable. There was like between 40 and 50% on each item of equipment said they'd be, you know, it, willing to consider switching. Obviously a concern about cost, but positive attitudes towards those products. Um, the biggest resistance that we saw, which is not surprising, is like, I'm never getting rid of my gas stove. Um, so, but that was only 19% of these respondents who said, I'm not interested in switching. Um, the other thing too, that I think you'll like to see is we did split out the data between homeowners and renters. And um, renters are super interested in all of this stuff. And they just feel obviously constrained by what their landlords will provide to them. So this is just a tiny smidgen of what you're gonna find in these results. Uh, so I would hope that um, it'll give you lots to talk about and um, lots to help you on your journey to um, on your goal setting for this year and coming years. So, and hopefully we'll get our message together so we can really uh, hammer this home and take advantage of this great work. So I wanna thank Bex again for making, um, you know, for partnering with us on this. It was really great. So and that's thank, my very short spiel. Ah. And thank you, Laurie, because you pulled all the results together. So thank you. I slept with it under my pillow. <laughs> it came to me. So um, I was just scrolling through the, the slide pack that you put up and the, the graphics are great. And um, you know, all of the graphs to support the storyline. And I mean, this seems like exactly what we need to start to do some of the outreach we've been talking about doing. So thank you I so think much. it should help you a lot, actually. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Does anyone else have any feedback or questions, Risa? Um, I just want to thank Lori and Bex for, you know, putting this together. It seems like a really useful tool uh, in a, on a lot of levels. And I was just curious, have you devised your strategy for presenting to council? No, I, you're, this is our first debut oh, here. Oh, cool, okay, okay, because that, <laughs> that's where my mind went. It's like, oh yes, council, yes. well, and then, okay. So, we would love, I would love, and, and maybe we don't have time for it here, but I would love to hear some really good ideas of how to really get a lot of bang out of this. It's a huge amount of work, it's really solid. And I'm we happy know. to be a part of brainstorming. Okay, so I'll anybody keep, else? I'll keep my mouth shut for now. Yeah, Anya, Risa, Larry. Yeah, I would, I would help. Jamie. 
Yeah. Okay, so why don't you guys take like a week to look at it, and then we'll talk next week. We'll all get a meeting together. Bex, you in for it? Mm -hmm. All yep, right, definitely. Oh, we, yeah, we that. need a team. We need collective impact. So we Hers need to help. Versus posted again. Um, I put it in the chat, James. Um, oh, in the chat. I haven't looked there. Okay. Yeah, and there's four or five documents. The, the, okay. the, the, there's it. like hundreds, a hundred pages of comments that people left. Wow. And so that's a big commitment, but that's where you'll feel that wave of emotion that you don't quite get in a survey monkey instrument. Yeah. It's just like, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Jamie, did you have something to add? I was just wondering, how did you get as many people as you got to fill out the survey? Well, what was the mode of... So Bex got it started with blasting it out to SOU channels. Mm -hmm. So like via email or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by, it went via email um, and social media for SOU channels. Um, since this survey, I've done another survey at SOU on commute and sustainability culture. And I actually put in um, $25 case coffee vouchers um for 15 random number generator and that got 582 responses and oh. that's just the sou community wow. so like that was incredible to get that many for just the sou community because that was a long survey too so yeah. both these surveys are getting attention and i actually think it's also i know i bribed with the second one the sou one with the case coffee voucher but I actually think it's interest in the topic. People want a voice in these topics um, and they want to be heard. And I think that's really important. And surveys don't usually get that kind of response. So when you get that response, it's because they're interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we hit, we hit social media many times over the five weeks it was mm -hmm. open, different channels with different messages. We had an ad and a sneak preview, but I don't really think we got much out of that. Yeah. But you know, it was worth a try. But it's worth a try. Yeah, no. And it was through the different social media in the community. I mean, the all staff, all employees, all student email, that's reaching. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, four, five, six thousand. So. Which is good. Um, um, we did a survey with SOU a few years back and uh, SOU talked us into doing a good old fashioned mailing. <laughs> and we got a thousand responses, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Um, but it was it was really just because people were so engaged in the topic, mm -hmm. and especially at that time, you know, right before the seat was developed. So, yeah. um, but it is one thing to remember, especially for if you want to reach older populations that don't uh, answer electronic surveys. That is another tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did this on no budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we found out if we had to go through this city, then we'd need a budget. So we decided, right, we're just going to do it. We're going to go for it. No budget. Yeah. So we did it. No budget. And I Thank shouldn't you. use the word bribe for that other survey. I should say incentive. <laughs> we did bribe. Case coffee voucher incentives. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. This has been great. Um, I can't wait Thank to you. dig into it some more. It looks really, really intriguing and very helpful. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. Um, but thanks for joining us, Lori, and you're welcome to stay longer if you're interested. Um, we have a couple things. So we're going to get into a little bit more goal setting. And I sent out ahead of time the packet that included the review of the survey results. And that way we don't have to go. Last meeting, I had to go through it with you so that it was part of public record, but this way it's part of public record ahead of time. So we don't have to actually physically go through the whole thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is share my screen and kind of give you the large view that came out of that rather than going through all the nitty gritty specific results. Um, I'm open to input on process, but my plan was to kind of review where we are and I'm putting together just kind of a guiding document for our commission. So it'll be a document that lists our long-term goals and our short-term goals, and we'll just keep adding and refining it over time, but that way it's all in one place. Um, let me just see if I can find that. Uh, can I share my screen, Mary? Do you have the controls for that? No. 
for me. It's not coming up. It's supposed to, I thought it was, let me see. Oh. Uh, uh, not coming up. Let's see. Hold on. Are you the host or is there someone else? That's no, it says I'm the host, but when I click on the more, it's not coming up as to share. Mm. So I don't know how to do it. Okay. I'm sorry, because if I do it this other way, you see my screen, it's not me. Let me see if I can do it this way. No. I don't know how else to do it. If you go into participants, can you make Marnie a co-host? Oh, then maybe I can do that. If you hit participants at the bottom. Yeah. And then hit next to Marnie's name, hit more. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, okay. Is that working? It is working. Thank you okay. so much. And thank you, Bex. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, so I hope you can see this Word document where I've just been putting all of our results. Um, so we have a vision, which was worked up from the specific words that I asked folks to give of, of how you view the commission or how you would like to view the commission. And, um, and then also just a description of, uh, let's see, how was it asked? Those are our words. Those are our words. That's yes. so cool you did that. <laughs> um, I lumped some of them together. People would use slightly different words that mean the same thing. So your word might not be exactly the same as it was, but um, but just because we, I could tell that we were trying to get at the same overall concept. Mani, I've um, only got half, half the page. Can you- You only have half the page? Yeah, just can the, you maximize the, top the half? screen? No, the um, right half. The right half. Same, yeah. I was yeah thinking. same here yeah I was thinking it was me I was like well, yeah how me too I'm not sure. did, it, did it change at all no it's yeah. just not the full screen it's like part of your screen not all of your screen can you oh, center okay, okay let me try again. the page maybe let's see that any better? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, perfect. I didn't change anything. I just <laughs> went out and went back in. Okay, so we have a vision, which is that we're a respected and familiar entity that leads efforts to conserve energy and resources, prevent waste, and help the community meet the goals of the sea. Um, we're not going to wordsmith right now. I'm completely open to anyone's suggestions on wording, and I can give you a word version of this, and you can make edits, um, but this is just kind of my first attempt at taking what everybody wrote and putting it kind of into a more concise um, language for all of us. So, uh, but don't think that this is the final word. Uh, the commission has strong partnerships with all different parts of the community with a focus on equity. The commission works closely with council and city staff as well as the CPC and other commissions. And the commission is a beacon of knowledge, innovation, positive momentum, cultural change and inspiration to the community. Um, and there are our words. We are active, knowledgeable, visible, consistent, fun, helpful, diverse, aware, indispensable. Uh, we are all those things. And then we, why we serve, this was from the first, uh, the first survey. So we don't need, need to go through all of this and I don't really wanna spend our time on all of it, but it's just giving us a more concise uh, overview of what makes us successful, why we serve, what our priorities are, uh, what the opportunities we have for partnerships, some of our agreements that we've had over time and we can add to these and we can change them, uh, our values, and then some of the roles and responsibilities. So thank you for those of you that stepped up to take on a few additional roles at this time. And I messed up on the survey, so I made it so anyone, you could only click on one thing. So if you wanna add your name to anything or 
something that's even not on the list, please just let me know because um, I'm more than happy to do that. So the only one of person was Jamie that figured out how to override the, the only having one choice. So we have Jamie's name on lots of different things. Um, nobody stepped up for future chair or vice chair. So it's just something to consider because I believe we are probably even overdue for voting in a new chair and vice chair. Um, I'm not going to take time on that now, but it's something to start thinking about if anyone's interested or has any ideas on how we want to manage that. Uh, we have some social directors, so James and Jamie. I, I realize we're coming out of COVID and COVID really restricted our abilities, but it just seems important that we gather in different ways, that we keep getting to know each other, um, and that we have some balance. I mean, climate change actually is kind of big and, and somewhat depressing sometimes, and we want to have a balance of also uh, doing fun things together. A question on that one, Marnie. Yeah. Um, in the survey, um, it came out as social director, create opportunities for connecting among commissioners. Mm. And, and I was that the way it was worded before? I think so, but I, I meant commissioners within our commission, but um, it, you know, you can take it in any direction you want. Okay, I, I, I misread it and that's okay. I don't mind this, but um, I was thinking um, among commissions, mm. <laughs> so. Okay, that's also important, so yeah. There's definitely room for that. Um, we have some interest in researching what other communities are doing, uh, especially I think if we want to get more in innovative and come up with some new ideas, it would be good to see who's doing what and maybe that'll spark kind of our, our thinking outside the box a little bit more. And um, we're going to have some working groups. We have some already that but um, we're hoping to have some more formal working groups and we'll need some leadership on those. So we have Kate who volunteered to help lead a group, but we'll just see what those groups develop into and then hopefully others will step up as well. And what else? Um, we have Jamie continuing to organize the sneak preview, which is great. And then we have all of us doing outreach since this is what we do. So, um, but specifically Bex uh, for SOU. So those are roles. Those again can change over time, uh, you know, as people step in and step out, or as we have different needs. And then we have some long-term goals that came out, and then some shorter-term goals that then I slotted under the long-term goals. And we can go through those. I don't know how comprehensive it is. It seems like there's probably some things missing, or maybe um, some little bit of redundancies or overlap, and we can kind of try and hash through some of that. Uh, and then the aim is to make these long-term goals smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And I think having some timelines would be really helpful for us moving forward. Um, so we don't have those yet, but we can develop those over time. And so these came directly out of the survey. I, I combined some of the answers when people had really similar responses and uh, refine some of them. So they're, they're slightly different, but again, if I miss something or if I, you know, if it's changed too much from what you intended, then we definitely want to address that. So let's see, uh, one, two, three, four. We have five kind of long-term goals. And then under there, we have these six short-term goals. And the six short-term goals are the ones that individuals wrote down with, with steps. And I didn't put the steps in here, but I still have them in the main document. So the first one is, um, and they're, they're worded as kind of a vision for where we want to go. So the public is fully educated on, dedicated to, and taking action on meeting the goals of the seat. So that's, that's a long-term goal. The long-term goals are about three to five years, which seems like a good time frame for this group to have a vision, but something that feels like we're gonna, we can get there. And also coordination among city staff, commissions and community groups on that SEEP education and outreach. Um, I would say this one came out strongest as far as the most people that mentioned that we really need to be doing outreach on, on SEEP. 
And there were a couple short-term goals also related to that one was large-scale SEEP education and activation campaign. Uh, and then the other one was researching how other communities are taking action in positive and equitable ways. Um, and then there was uh, also some interest in making sure that everybody understands kind of what our, how we are doing so we can work collectively on meeting our emissions targets and, and be able to see progress. So that's our first long-term goal. The second one is that the CCOC has a clear and well-organized team of individuals that share our information on conservation, help people get rebates and incentives, celebrate successes and track progress. You know, these do overlap in certain ways, and yet um, this one's more general. It's not specifically the SEEP. Um, it really gets back to our roots of, of just really moving forward on conservation. It includes things like tabling. Uh, there was definitely some interest in door-to-door -door and neighborhood outreach efforts. And I've actually started hearing about these neighborhood climate change groups, which I didn't even know about, but it's just neat that it's happening. It's bubbling up more organically, but um, also providing some support for those groups that already exist. Interest in educational programs at schools and North Mountain Park and then other opportunities. There's a short-term goal of promoting existing city incentives using a variety of outreach mediums. So that fits in um, under that long-term goal. We have the community transitions away from gasoline and natural gas. I lumped those together. I went back and forth. If there's reason to keep them separate, we can talk about that too. Um, but they both came out really strong. Of, uh, and it's not gasoline as in cars, although that's definitely you know, also important, but it's talking about um, the, the lawn care and yard um, tools. So, you know, working with other groups, especially to make sure that we're coordinated and that we're supporting policy and um, that we're just part of the larger effort to meet these goals. So the short-term goals are coordinate with other groups, join efforts on switching off natural gas. And the other short-term goal was uh, having an electric lawn care event uh, at Ace Hardware, which was planned before COVID hit and then had to be canceled. We have the community is actively reducing consumption and consumption-based emissions based on CCC outreach, innovation, and activation with a short-term goal of an outreach campaign focused on reducing consumption. Um, and this is something, you know, we know half our emissions come from consumption and yet it, it's, you know, in the development of the SEEP, it was one of those things that people were having a really hard time even imagining how you address such an issue. So. Uh, but it seems like as an outreach group, that would be right up our alley. And then just something that came up as I was putting this together, it just felt like a gap. And again, I'm looking for your input, um, but lower income homeowners and renters have energy efficient homes and renewable energy options, which fits right in with the results from the survey that save them money and provide protection from smoke and heat. Um, and there were suggestions that we link utility costs to energy use, um, but then also linking that to support for upgrades and weatherization for lower income homes and rentals. So that's kind of where we are. Um, the, the short term goals, these ones, these, these are the same six that then got slotted in under the long term goals. Um, so just so you see. And then I've just been really busy this week. So I don't have a set plan for how we want to organize from here. We have some specific actions that have been identified um, on the survey and we can look at those. Um, we also can figure out how to organize groups around this and start to fill out. I think what we need to do is, is work on the specific measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound on the long-term goals. Um, but just take it one by one. We don't want to just try and do all of them at once. That would be too much. So we're going to have to prioritize. James. Thanks, Marnie. Um, <clears throat> I know this probably is disturbing to most people to know how my mind works, but um, <laughs> I want to share it anyway. When I look at this, um, I see number one as a long-term goal. And 
you know, that's, and, and anything we do, including conservation efforts are fit, fit within the SEEP naturally because the SEEP is all about conservation as well. And what I see with number two, three, and four, the short, the, the long-term goals, the, the, the subsequent long-term goals to me are what I might call midterm goals because really we had an overriding goal and then we have midterm goals, we can have short-term goals associated with it. It may be just a way of rewording it, but the way that my mind thinks is we then have a, an overriding goal for our commission and it doesn't splinter us into several separate groups at that point that we can be more organized in how we move forward with this. Just my way of organizing my thoughts around this. Um, so, okay, I'm sorry, I missed a little bit of that. So the long-term, you think the first one's long-term and where were the midterm? Okay, so my thought is just in looking at this, number one is like an overarching long-term goal. Mm -hmm. And then the, the preceding ones, including the short-term goals under number one, yeah. the, the, so number two, three, four, and whatever, if you have five down there, I forget how many you have, are really kind of more midterm and that what we then have is short-term goals within those midterms because then we have an overarching goal for our commission that we're all behind rather than splintering ourselves you know in working groups between one two three and four and five when number one is like the overarching thing that's just the way my mind works and it makes helps me to organize how i because i'd, I'd want to land in number one but i want to do things in, in number with the the gas you know side of things too you right. know what i'm saying right yeah, and definitely, I mean, the ad addressing gas and natural gas, um, both of those are definitely part of the SEEP as well. So that's where there's definitely some overlap. Um, you know, I really went on people's answers to the survey, which was, you know, labeled either give us a short term what you want to work on right now or give us long term goals. So that's where these came from. But we can kind of stack them in different ways. And I'm open to what you're saying, James, as far as um, having an overarching goal. And Kate, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, Marnie, um, I just really appreciate your work on this. And um, I think you've done a really good job of putting these together from the surveys that we did. And you know, we did two different levels. Um, and it really makes um, our work a lot more clear to me as a new commission member. I think there's some really great ideas here. Um, it feels like a lot of work, but there are different pieces. And I agree with James, they all kind of fit together uh, yeah. under that seat. But I really appreciate your work, Marnie. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually just, you know, using the survey tool, it took a lot of time for me, but less time for everyone else. <laughs> so I realize overall it saves some time, um, but it's also quite a bit of work. So thank you. Um, so I think what I would like to do is have folks, so we have our existing groups, which we don't have to hold on to. Sorry, Marnie, I don't yeah. think you, sorry, Risa I and can't. I both had our hands up. Oh. I'm guessing you don't have us on screen because I you're know. sharing screen. So I'm trying to see you guys, and for some reason I can't. And you can pull so. the thing out at the bottom to make us bigger, or if you stop sharing, but I quite, yeah. Um. Okay, someone showed me how to do that before to see everybody. And so some... if you go in, yeah, if you go in the grid thing and then pull the bottom left hand corner, oh. you can make us all big again. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, Bex and Risa. So, no, I just want to echo Kate's comments. Marty, I think this is brilliant how you pulled it together and I really like it. And just on James's comment, I was, what you were saying, James, I, I think there's two things in there. One is like the large scale seat education, but then there's other, the other one that I was quite keen on was just the general awareness of seat. So maybe that's two different things. And one is the overarching vision and one is a shorter, a shorter term goal. Cause I probably see those two as separate. So that might um, address the point you're raising, James, cause I, <coughs> I totally understand what you're saying there. The other thing is for me, it forms like, I guess it's an outreach plan and outreach strategy that keeps us all aligned in what we're trying, trying to do. Um, 
I also want to recognize that I, I don't think a way of achieving each short-term goal is that a committee comes together. Sometimes I think it's actions underneath and it doesn't always need a subcommittee. Sometimes I think it might be one person with some actions. Sometimes it might be a discussion here and then two people get action to do two different things um, and not always a subcommittee. So I just want to recognize there's different ways of achieving these goals rather than sitting on a committee. But I really like how it's been pulled together. And I think, yes, thank you. Huge effort from you, that's all. Um, yeah, I do want to validate just the, what you're talking about. Of It doesn't have to always be a subcommittee. and just But just having it on paper and organized in a way, it's like, OK, we know this needs to get done. And maybe mm -hmm. one of us can pick it up and do it. Or, yeah. or maybe there's something we're doing that, that slots right in in an organized way. I know. I actually think this strategy helps us maybe not jump to the whole thing of, oh, we need to form a subcommittee and yeah. talk about it for the next five months. Actually, we've got <laughs> a strategy here where we can do, yeah. do things. Yeah, okay. I Great. really like that. Thank you. I'm going to go to Risa and then Larry. Great. Um, yeah, I, I echo what my other commissioners have said in, in appreciation to all the time that you've put into really allowing us to have this conversation and to move forward uh, with less effort and time on our part. So thank you. Um, it occurred to me that, you know, I, it's, I think it's good to think about the long-term goals, the short-term goals and that kind of thing. But the other piece that I just, I really want to insert so that we activate sooner rather than later is that we move forward with the awareness and understanding that the city currently lacks the resources, the staff that we might need to tackle some of these areas. And so rather than having to pick our nose while, while we wait, it seems really important that we activate much, much sooner, as in like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so in thinking that way, I was, I was thinking about SEEP, which is big picture, but maybe the low hanging fruit piece that was reiterated by the survey that Bex and Lori just did, that was one of the, the communications that people had is, we didn't know the city did X, Y, and Z. And so in my mind, we want to take that. And, and because those are things that exist today. It isn't anything we have to go to council. Please incentivize switching gas to electric. Incentivize. No, I, I think we need to take the things that we can move on today to get the word out. and. Think of the low hanging fruit as a launching pad, a medium for the bigger picture of C. Somehow there needs, we need to figure out how to hook um, interested public. I, I don't have the answer to that, but I think it might be worth exploring because it was like, well, what's the chicken or the egg? You know, making the changes or incentivizing the people to make it possible. So that's, and I don't think we should have any, I think we need incentives to go with asking people to make uh, financially impactful changes, in my opinion. Otherwise, it's just those with keep making strides and other people get left behind and that's not right thank you okay thank you larry um yeah i i i just want to say i think risa you really uh brought up really some serious um question in how we should approach this and I think it bears more discussion. Uh, I think that would be really great. Yeah, I think there is a lot of low hanging fruit and I do think that that survey did reveal that and that 
the I, I love your idea of it being a launching pad to the bigger picture for people, because I think that a lot of people look from the outside and they see a bunch of, you know, sort of college eggheads up on the hill coming up with this great grand plan, but how, you know, how can I relate to it? And now we, we have these programs that people can relate to on an immediate level. And I like that a lot. What I was going to say, I guess, in terms of this was triggered by what uh, James talked about, the vocabulary of it, that I understand this is goal setting. So we characterize sort of all the intermediaries as different kind, sorts of goals. But I guess now brought it all together, Marty, which I think you've done a great job of pulling together the results of, you know, the input that you've gotten from the commission and adding some really good stuff in addition. Um, I think it's, I, I guess in my mind, I'm going to just share that. I think about goals and implementation and that that's sort of, those are the two pieces and goals in a, in a way, the goal is the big goal of ta of mitigating climate problems and the implementation is everything else. So the question is, how do you, I, I guess rather than, than seeing implementation as these individual goals around gas, around water use, around um, transportation, that maybe it's a way how can individuals do their part and grow their part in working on climate mitigate, you know, climate change mitigation. Uh, it's somehow there, there ought to be a way that somebody can feel once they engage, you know, it's like we talk about these goals for the city, but individuals can make goals in their lives that are much more finely tuned to their finances, to their uh, consciousness about the environment, to their concern about family and the future, uh, for the for for young people, they're going to look at it in yet another way because it's so existential for them. Less so, certainly for me, you know. And some of us in the in the in the middle years, you're kind of torn both ways. So, I guess I, I'd really like to see. I, it would be wonderful if we could get together in person and talk about how we could. I guess it's a matter of how to present this material in the way that would activate people in the in the most uh, dynamic way. I'll leave it at that. I know okay. we have. And when you say present this material, which material do you mean? The well, present goals as you know, present e each. I mean, each area that that we that you talked about that we want to work on that relate to the overall goal. You know, how do we sort of deliver that message? It's not that different than how do you create a survey for people who are already very, I, I, think, I think it's a mistake too to say people who aren't engaged. I think all, virtually in our community, everybody is engaged in, the, in, in, in climate concerns. Um, but it's how are they engaged and, and what is their route? What is their lane, as it were? And that's what I think we could talk about because I think it's different for different groups of people. And I think especially when we're talking about equity, which I'm so glad came up a number of times this evening, is that when somebody is not feeling that they have the wherewithal to you know, put solar PV on their roof or to buy an electric car or something like that, they shouldn't even be having to, you know, look at that and feel that. They should be having a program presented to them that they can engage with right now. I guess, you know, I mean, there's, there's to me, there's just a lot to talk about, not to take up time talking about it, but to strategize on yeah. the best way to deliver what, you know, what our goals are. Okay, um, and I think about this is. If pretty much an internal, I mean, I realize it's open to the public, but it's not something that we're going to use for any sort of outreach. It's just to organize ourselves. Um, and that way it's easier for any one of us to just 
you know, look at what we're trying to achieve and figure out where you fit in right now. You know, what can I work on right now that at least fits in with our overarching goals and where we understand where it fits mm -hmm. in? Um, and then, and then what do we want to work on, you know, later in the year and two, three, four years down the road. So hopefully, you know, that'll just help us instead of get lost in all of the options um, to really try and organize ourselves either individually or as groups as much as we want to work in our subgroups. Um, I'm happy to go through and refine this some more. If there's anything, you know, really missing from here or uh, if you feel strongly that some of these need to be either um, combined or broken out, we can we can do some of that. Yeah, Kate. Marnie, um, we can we see this as a working document then? Yes. Is that what I hear you saying? Yes. Yes. And I, I love that. And I love that we can, you know, move some things around or change the priorities of some of these, or maybe five of us really want to work on one thing because that's critical right now. Mm -hmm. So um, it does seem like it's, uh, very flexible, but this does organize us around some big ideas. Yeah, and I, what I hear right now, I mean, there's Earth Day coming up. Um, there's this need to get information out on existing city incentives, existing programs, um, there's tabling. So it sounds like there's definitely a need to do some very near-term outreach. And so maybe some of us can activate around that. Um, as far as we'll need materials, we'll need you know to figure out what our messaging is and what we want to prioritize. So that might be might be something for kind of immediate term. But then I also want to appreciate you know all of the goals that everybody offered up on the survey, and that those all fit into the bigger picture in different ways. Does anyone have a suggestion for how we want to move forward from here? I'm just a little brain dead from all of this. <laughs> Bex, go ahead. Can you share? Can you share that document? But yeah. I don't know if we can have it on Google Drive because of cancelable. Right. Um, I can send it out as long as we don't have group discussions around it uh, over email. So I can give it to all of you, and then it'll also be in the in the notes from today. Um, and then we don't want to do a bunch of back and forth on it. James. Okay, you can see me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure who you see now. Um, I it would be good. I think. It would be good if you gave us an opportunity to individually, if you sent it out um, with a, you know, so that there's a markup kind of capacity on it and just our suggestions that we could put in there, not necessarily okay. change the text, but put suggestions in. It might help to recap uh, our discussion today so that, other, so that we can all kind of have that input and summarize or new thoughts of input that you could then collate and bring forward. That would be helpful. That sounds great. Yeah. So when you, if I send it out to you and you make some suggestions or feedback, um, just send it back to me, but not yeah, to the whole yeah, group. Right, right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I didn't thank you for the hard work you did. And it's obvious that you did that. I just kind of dove right into my thing. So I thank oh. you as well for the work <laughs> you did. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it feels good to get our, our thoughts a little bit more organized. Um, and then, some of the information from the survey isn't in here. So, you know, if there's anything that you really feel strongly about moving it over into this document, please feel free to do that as well. Um, there were some great suggestions on the actual steps, which we'll want to use as we move this forward, um, you know, when we want to develop actual timelines and, and actions to be taken. So we have some of those already worked out. I was going to have folks vote on those, but then I thought that seemed like a little bit, um, to, I don't know, specific, but they haven't really been well hashed out. So we'll wait till we have something more refined. Um, is there anything else, any other input on where we're going with this document and how it's gonna guide us? And I guess I would like, I mean, we're in this holding pattern and I know for all of us, it probably feels a little frustrating because we actually do wanna be working on some things. So I wanna, we have five minutes. Um, does anyone have a, a good way forward to get out of our holding pattern right now? I'm, I'm gonna look at the document when you send it through and just look at um, SOU outreach communities. Cause obviously I do have a Ashland, you know, audience there that would benefit from hearing what the city um, can provide and do and things like that. So that's what I'm gonna do 
just as my own assessment there. Okay. Um, I've been doing some other work through our sustainability newsletter to raise awareness about SEEP and what Ashland's trying to do. So yeah, so I'm going to take that another step and look at it in that kind of with that lens on it. Because that's okay. where, yeah, I can help in terms of outreach within the SOU community. Okay, great. Thank you. That sounds fantastic. Uh, Larry. Yeah, I just I just raised and lowered. I think that, uh, I mean, I think we, this is a, a pretty rich document that we'll be able to use on these tabling events and Earth Day events. You know, this is kind of, we can, we can use material from here as our guide to what we want to present to people and how we want to gather our information for these. So the, those of us that get involved in it, I think we'll be informed by, by this work and we'll learn something from it because we'll get a response from quite a number of people. I think we'll be, the Earth Day events will expose us to you know several hundred people probably and we'll get input. And I think it would be helpful if people have some good ideas of how we could maybe collect um, information on people who might want to get more involved in in what we do. You know, I, I'm not very good at that kind of strategizing, but if someone has some ideas that they would share with those of us that maybe get involved in the tabling, that would be great. I mean, beyond just collecting names and email addresses. I mean, like if people knew that there's going to be this, like the water summit or whatever, something coming up that you know, you might want to engage with, you know, because of your interests. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have anything to add? Does anyone know if there's any organization behind the, I know there's these individual neighborhood groups that are um, uh, either trying to implement the SEEP or figuring out what their climate action should be. Does anyone know if there's organization behind those? Is that the, um Laurie's on here. Is that the Ashland Climate Collaborative? Are they coming from that though? Because there's action groups coming from that. I think they, they existed before that group. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Because some are coming from that where community is getting together. Okay. And Pachamama is um, okay. maybe involved in that, that process too. Lori might know or someone from Pachamama. Okay. Marty? Yeah. So if I heard you, you're asking each of us to, once we receive this document, to go through it and to insert, add, subtract what, what we think and get it back to you. And then, you know, I, I'm not, you know, the activation thing, you know, it would be great to, to get out of the holding pattern yeah. And I, I'm not sure if we need to wait um, before this is um, clarified, narrowed. I don't know. I don't know that we need to wait. I mean, if you if you identify, you know, each of everyone in this group chose one of these short term goals already and said, this is something I want to work on in the next year. So if there if there's an action within there that you want to get started on. Um, there's no reason to have to wait until more organization comes forward, but I do like your idea if I send this out and if you want to slot kind of some specific actions in there, so maybe under short term goal, you might put your steps and, and what you're going to start on or who needs to do that or just some ideas. Um, and we can move forward that way and then I can get the whole document back out to everybody later. Um, but I don't want people to feel like they have to wait until the next meeting before they can, you know, start to get together, maybe outreach materials or figure out which mm -hmm. topics to focus on and which events. Um, yeah, I'm that. really sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to go. That's okay. I think we're about done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. 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 Um, okay. So that's kind of the plan. And um, so get back your feedback to me. And don't feel like you can't move forward. Um, I know we're still not quite organized, but we're getting a lot closer. Mm -hmm. um, I know the story group is still gonna keep meeting and moving forward with that. We now have a group that's gonna talk about Earth Day and about the water summit. Um, and so there's, you know, folks can also meet informally in smaller groups, especially yeah. now that we have some of these uh, short-term goals identified. 
I have a I have a procedural question about I just looked at the chat and I can see that there's been a lot put in the chat. I think Lori put some stuff in there. Is there We're a way to share? use the chat? It's just we we're very discouraged from using the chat. I know that. Well, I understand that, but there, just so Lori hears that that chat may not get delivered. That's all. Oh, okay. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next okay. time. Thanks, Beck. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Um, is there anything else urgent before we close the meeting? Okay. So let me know um, if you need anything on the agenda for next time. We're going to have more of a normal meeting next time. We'll probably have this cleaned up quite a bit, um, but we won't be focusing as much on goal setting. Hey, Larry, will you work with me on the climate summit thing? I mean, the yeah. uh, water, water summit? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Good to see everybody. Thank, Thank you. Mark. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Mary. We That's appreciate work, you making and our meeting else. possible. Yeah, Mary, thank you. Hi, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah, Mary, thank you. Hi, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Tanya.